I'm Ryan Cashman, and this is a tutorial for the Stereo 3D Toolkit version 2. This tutorial is going to cover all of the basics of working with the Stereo 3D Toolkit in After Effects. I'm not going to use any plugins in this tutorial so that it's easier for everyone to follow along depending on what you have installed on your system. However, the Stereo 3D Toolkit is compatible with Element, Form, Particular, and any other 3D plugin for Adobe After Effects. For this tutorial, I've built a scene out of 3D layers, a text layer, a light casting shadows, and of course, a camera. So let's get started. First, open the Stereo 3D Toolkit version 2. If you need help installing, check out this link. So let's press New. If you don't have anything selected, you'll get a pop-up explaining what you should do. First, select your active composition. Second, select the camera within that composition that you wish to use as your master camera for the scene. Now press New. You'll get a confirmation window asking if this is the composition and camera that you want to use. If everything looks correct, hit Yes. After the script runs, things will look pretty much the same, except now there's a yellow square in the middle of your composition. That is the zero parallax locator. We will cover it in greater detail later on. For now, let's check out the project window and see what happened there. In place of a single composition, there's now a folder with the same name. When we open it up, you can see all of the compositions that make up our stereoscopic workflow. To help keep things organized, color labels have been applied to the compositions. Left channel comps are blue, and right channel comps are red. At the bottom, there is a backup of your original composition, in case you wish to revert to a non-stereoscopic version. The most important composition in the group is the S3D composition, labeled in pink. This is where your stereo preview and all of your stereoscopic controls are. I have my preview set to red and blue anaglyph, which is probably the most common display method for stereo content, but if you have a different display type, you can change that by going to the 3D preview layer and adjusting the settings in the 3D glasses effect. The S3D controls layer is where you can adjust your camera's stereoscopic settings, as well as turn the zero parallax locator on and off. I'm going to open the flowchart to better show the relationship between these compositions. When working with the Stereo 3D Toolkit, it's important to keep in mind that the left channel is always the master channel. This is where you will do all of your work. The right channel is an instance automatically generated by the script every time you run the new or the update function. Knowing that the right channel is an instance, let's take a closer look at the compositions in the left channel. At the top is the master left composition. This is basically the same comp you started with before running the script. This is where you will find your stereo camera rig, all of your layers and effects. If you need to make any changes to your animation, they would be done inside of this composition. The master left then links up to the stereo 3D left. This composition makes aligning your stereoscopic content to existing video footage, either 2D or 3D, a whole lot easier. It's also a good place to add levels or color correction to your individual channels. And eventually, all roads lead to the master S3D composition. Again, this is where you have your stereo preview and all of your stereo controls. Now let's add some animation to the camera. First, we're going to take a look at the rig created by the script. The S3D camera is the master camera for the entire system. Any changes made to this will be inherited by all the other cameras in the left and right channels throughout the entire workflow. Attached to the S3D camera are the left and right channel cameras. In the left channel, the left camera is active, and in the right channel, the right camera. There is no need to adjust these cameras manually, because they get all of their properties and animation from the master S3D camera. Before I start moving the camera, I'm going to turn on the zero parallax locator. Now when I move the camera forward, you can see the text begins to push through this yellow square. Anything in front of the yellow square is going to appear to pop out of the screen when viewed in 3D. Anything behind a square will appear to sink into it. I'm going to add a null object and use it as a pivot for my S3D camera. I'm going to add some rotation keyframes. Now go back to the S3D preview. As you may expect, the preview looks all kinds of messed up. This is because we only applied the animation changes to the left channel. What we need to do now is run the update function. Select the master S3D composition in the project window and hit update. 
This will regenerate all of the right channel compositions and link them back to the S3D comp. If you would like to render your stereo preview, you just drag the master S3D comp into the render queue. Or if you would prefer to render your individual channels, just bring the stereo left and stereo right comps into the render queue as well. In the next tutorial, I'm going to take a closer look at the camera system and the S3D controls. Yeah.